Hey guys, so I just added a new function to YPry. This one is to mimic only smartphones. So it will switch between continually changing randomized MAC addresses of either Samsung or Apple, and it will change at continually changing randomized times and valid OUI MAC addresses. I'm going to show you today how to use system control to edit a service at the same time as I'm showing you how to add this new P flag to your startup. And the reason I suggest changing over to the P mode is because cell phones are the most common devices out there and they blend in very well. So by changing over to this mode, you will not run risk of standing out. You will not run risk of standing out in a crowd with a strange brand name. So we're going to first change it in our system D startup. So I've assumed you've already downloaded and installed YPry. It's There's another video on that if you haven't done so. It's fairly easy. It's very easy to do, actually. All you have to do is download it and run the install script, and that's it. And it's one simple question after that. So I'm assuming you have YPry installed, and what we're going to do is we're going to change directory over to the systemd service file directory. So at this point, we've just changed directories to etc slash systemd slash system. After we've gotten there, you're going to see, as I've listed, all of the different service files that are in the directory for all your different systemd services. So you can use this to modify the way your other services run as well. So I'm kind of doing two things in one video. And at this point, we see the ypry.service file. That is what is installed when you run the install.sh script for ypry. So we're going to open an editor, and we're going to edit that. And we're just going to simply change the command. And what we need to do is exit start. What that means when you're editing a systemd command is you're going to put the full path of whatever it is you're trying to change. And the new flag is capital P. You can still use the old flag if you want to uh, have an even larger variety of brand names to cycle through com uh, continually randomized at randomized changing times. But this is going to solely use the cell phone OUI file. And that means you'll have a valid cell phone, either a Android or Apple MAC address at the same time it will continually change between them at continually changing randomized times. So we all we had to do is add the P flag in place of the default I flag, capital P. And at that point, once we've changed these two lines, the exec reload is what command you're gonna what's gonna run when you hit system control restart. And at that point, it's going to execute this. It's going to stop the YPRI service, as you see in the beginning. And then it's going to start it back up. So after, when you hit system control stop, it's going to kill all, nine flag, and then the service itself. So I just wanted to go over what these things do and what each of these lines mean. So each systemd service has its own service file. And you can edit any number of them, but we're using this one for an example since I just added a new function. And I personally wanted to add it for my own machine because I felt like it was a better way to blend in. Keep it to smartphone brand names and valid OUI addresses. See, when someone's trying to track down the true MAC address, one method that is used and documented commonly is to cross out all the invalid OUI-based MAC addresses. So if you use another MAC changing uh, program, you're going to have many MAC addresses that have no valid OUI. And that's the benefit of using the YPRI with the valid OUI is you will always have a valid MAC address and nothing on the network will say unknown device, which stands out like a sore thumb. So we're going to then use control O and what that will do is allow us to save in nano editor. And once we do that, we'll do control X and that allows us to exit it. So after we've edited our service file, we're going to need to then restart our systemd. But before we do that, we're going to need to reload our service file. This is going to be the same with any service that you're changing on systemd, or if you create your own service. So what we'll do next is we'll do system control, and then what we do is daemon reload, 
and at that point it will reload the service file and now we can restart it. So then we'll just issue system control restart YPRI. And at that point we can then use system control to view our service and take a look and make sure everything started properly. So we'll do system control status YPRI. And as you can see it shows that it changed, it is running, it shows active right here and that's what you're going to want to see. That and if you're doing the same system D service that I'm using you're going to be looking for a valid MAC address. So if it shows changing MAC to a valid MAC address it looks like you're up and running and you have correctly edited your service file and you have correctly reloaded that service file and restarted your service. The same process would apply to any other service you want to edit. As you can see, there's so many other services. I'm going to show you smartd.service. And as you can see, it has a similar .service file. So the same process would apply. You would edit the .service file. You would change the command you want executed on start. You would change the command you would want executed for if you were going to reload that service and you would make sure it, everything applied to your service. So everything looks like it's running well and that is what I have guys. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned a little something about System D and how service files work. I just wanted to show you guys because I think the new flag on YPRI is a better way to blend in considering most devices out there if you are in the presence of Wi-Fi trackers that track your phone and your computer by having Wi-Fi enabled. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, you don't even have to be connected to an access point. Just having Wi-Fi on scans for access points in that area. And trackers, what they do is they listen for those communications. And at that point, they have your MAC address. So it is an important thing to change your MAC address. Not only that, but say you're using Tor. One way that you know, users on Tor have been identified in the past is through their MAC address. So by using YPRI and using valid OUIs, you appear to be the exact MAC address that you have since it's a valid brand name. And as I mentioned before, one way of tracking down the, the true MAC address of a machine is to cancel out all the invalid OUIs. And if there are invalid MAC addresses being changed to, that those would be disregarded and they would just look at the valid OUI MAC addresses. So it's, it's pretty important your MAC address is one form of fingerprint on your system and one of the ways, as I mentioned, that Tor users in different exploits have revealed MAC addresses. If you look back at my Watch Out for Hidden Code video, I actually do demonstrate how some single three lines of code could be converted to a base 64 format. It wouldn't show you exactly what it's doing. It could also be added to any number of other programming languages where your MAC address could be revealed. So even if you do everything right everywhere else, if your MAC address is the MAC address that is your permanent MAC address, you are still vulnerable to revealing your identity. So that's what I got today, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of this, and I hope you try out the new functional YPRI. I think it's the best way you can blend in. Of course, you can use some of the other features too, and you can do some editing if you wanted to change your service file any other way. As uh, as I've shown you in the past, there's, there's many other flags you can use. So that's what I got today, guys. Uh, I'm going to do more videos on the Pine Phone coming up, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to burn another operating system in the next day or so and upload a video to show you guys a different operating system and how it's running. So please like the video, please share it, subscribe, and I'll be back later with more on how you can protect your privacy.